Thank you for turning to page 121. Today I've got a book I'm really excited about uh, taking a look at. I was excited about getting it. It came out on July 29th of 2022, and it is the High Guard 2022 update from Mongoose. I make sure I don't have a glint in the light. Uh, it's available now only on PDF. The hardcover comes out in December. I'm going to take a look at the book, what brings inside. Um, pretty excited about this. I, I, I've enjoyed reading it. Uh, I'm not a gearhead. If you followed my channel, you know that. I don't really make my own starships or anything like that. Uh, this one's changed my mind. I've got an idea for a starship I'm going to design, and if it comes out like I want, if it's decent, I'll uh, show it sometime down the line on the channel. Uh, this is, I enjoy this. One thing I want to say before I get too deep into this is this is the 2022 update. They did publish a previous High Guard a few years ago. That was during my whole, oh, I don't need the new book uh, phase. I've since corrected the error of my ways, but I don't have the old High Guard. This will not be a comparison video where I'll tell you what was in the old one versus what's in the new one. I'm only going to show what's in the new one. So please don't ask me to compare the two. I don't have the other one. I'm not going to be getting the other one. I'm, this is going to be the one I'm going to use. So today on page 121, High Guard 2022 update. Traveler High Guard update 2022. This is uh, the newest version of High Guard. Uh, Mongoose had already had a High Guard for first and second edition. Uh, I actually own uh, High Guard for first edition. I never bought High Guard for Mongoose Traveler second edition because that was during my whole, oh, I don't need that. I have the old stuff phase. Fortunately, I've gotten out of that phase. And uh, I'm appreciating the new stuff that's been coming out. This is a beautiful book. I love this cover. Uh, this reminded me right away of the ships in the Expanse with the four engines in the back. Uh, I'm okay as the Traveler uh, ship aesthetic expands and evolves. I'm all for it. I, I think this is a gorgeous cover. So we go inside and we see, of course, the credit of classic Traveler Mark Miller. The Mongoose Traveler, the author, is Christopher Griffin. Christopher Griffin writes a really good book. I uh, I like that a great I like his stuff a great deal. Um, one of the main traveler writers for Mongoose Second. So now we take a look, and we get a nice quote from Carl Sagan, and then we get the introduction. What is High Guard? And they talk here about what High Guard is. High Guard being the position of in higher point of guarding a ship that's re wilderness refueling in a gas giant. You put some ships up above to protect against enemies pouncing on the ship that's refueling, and they are said to be mounting high guard. That's where the term comes from. We get a look at the Imperial Navy. They talk about the ship's locker. I did a video a few months ago on the ship's locker. It can be your friend, or and is definitely the player's friend. So they touch on it a little bit here. And then we talk about the navies of the Imperium, the subsector navies, the planetary navies, those don't belong to the Imperium proper. They might be subsidized by the Imperium, but they're not actually part of the Imperium. And then we talk about Imperial Naval Operations, System Defense Boats and Monitors. I did a video on System Defense Boats not too long ago. Uh, system Defense Boat is a non-jump capable vessel. It stays within one system to defend it, hence the name. You can have them all the way up to monitor class. If you have an old decommissioned monitor, uh, you just go ahead and either don't maintain the jump, jump drives or gut them, or they can be purpose-built never having had jump drives. And now you have a big old monitor flopping around in the system. So it gives the breakdown of how the Navy is uh, set up with battle squadrons, cruiser squadrons, assault, assault squadrons, and then a bunch of definitions. Uh, spaceship is any ship that can go into space. A starship is one that can go between worlds, between stars. And then different types, a blockade runner, a fast ship that's designed to go through blockades, a courier, that's a message taker, a Q ship, <clears throat> that's a trader, merchant, freighter, or other vessel that's really a military vessel or has military capability that's in disguise as a weaker military, uh, <clears throat> as a weaker merchant ship. So bad guy pirates will pounce on it and surprise, we're really, uh, we've got guns, we've got all kinds of stuff. And uh, we continue on with the various military ships. Now, this just came out in PDF uh, on the July 29th of 2022. It's not due to be in the 
print version until December, according to Mongoose's website. So this is pretty much what you're going to have for a while. So now we come down to the ship design. How do you make a ship? And it goes into all the details. And a lot of the important thing is the costs and the tech level. It depends on what you're building. Here is a ship design checklist. This is a very nice uh, design checklist. Uh, if you follow Seth Skorkowski's channel, he's done some really nice stuff with Traveler Starship Design. Uh, he did a video about four or five months ago that is specifically about designing a starship using Highguard 2nd Edition. And he goes into a lot of detail there. I'm not a gearhead. Uh, I'm not one to sit down and design my own starship for Traveler or for Silent Death, or to make my own battle mech for Battletech. This book actually has me uh, thinking about a ship design. It would be my first one in many, many years. And uh, I have a scenario that goes with the ship. So I'm, I'm going to see how that goes. If it, As I said in the open, if it goes well, I'll show the ship as part of my channel. So now that we've got the nice little flow chart, which, by the way, is very handy to keep on hand while you're designing, you go ahead to each step. Creating the hull. I'm not going to go into a ton of the actual uh, meat and potatoes of building a starship simply because this video would be hours long if I did. This is really about an overview of what's in this book. So for this one, we're just taking a look at creating the hull, installing your armor, uh, heat shielding, radiation shielding. Do you want reflect to help protect against lasers? Uh, and now you install the drives, the jump drive and the maneuver drive. The maneuver drive uh, in the charted space universe, and it's interesting, they call out the charted space universe a number of places in here because there's technology that is either going to be very advanced for the charted space universe or maybe for your alternate traveler universe. So it's kind of neat because a lot of the stuff that might have been put into a book like Traveler Companion, which is a fine book, uh, is actually called out uh, here, so you, you get some alternatives uh, for different drives and things like that uh, in this book. So here we talk about uh, maneuver drive, back to the topic. They use th thruster plates using gravotic technology to move a ship without the need for exhaust propellant. When in operation, thrust plates build up an ionization that glows blue. The higher the thrust deployed, the brighter and more vibrant the blue color appears, and for efficiency, they're almost always mounted at the back of the vessel. And then we have a little blurb here on synchronized jumps. That's taking your fleet into jump. One thing that always kind of made me scratch my head in Traveler was these fleet actions where the ships are arriving, you know, possibly the first one arrives and, you know, then the bulk of your fleet and then possibly as much as a day after the first one arrived, your last one arrives. And that had always kind of confused me in Traveler. Well, this talks about synchronized jumps where you use skills for every uh crew aboard every vessel to make the jump and to have them come in within minutes of each other so you have an effective fleet that won't be destroyed piecemeal when it arrives. So we're taking a look at the various jumps, uh, drives, maneuver, and jump. And now the power plant. How are you going to give these things all power? Well, here you go. Here's your power plant. Talks about internal gravity. You might not want internal gravity. Maybe you want to just spin the ship for gravity. And then uh, install few ta fuel tanks. You're going to need the necessary fuel tonnage in order to move your vessel about. Now you install the bridge, the heart of the ship, the uh, hub of operations. You know, you can go with a, a bridge that's standard size. You can save some money and make a smaller bridge, but that can give you some modifiers and checks related to space uh, operations, so astrogation and pilot checks. I'm not really sure I agree with that rule, by the way, getting a minus one on an astrogation check. When you've got a guy who could actually theoretically start plotting it in his stateroom and then come out onto the bridge and finalize it. So I don't know that I'd impose a, a die modifier there just because it's a, a cramped bridge. And then we go to the install the computer. And there's a lot about in computers later in this book. Uh, so now you've got to pay for the, uh, the computer itself. Computer doesn't actually take up tonnage. It's considered kind of hardwired and everything. Sensors. Your ship's no good without sensors, the eyes and ears of the vessel. Step 8, install weapons. Step 9, install optional systems. Step 10, determine the crew. What crew do you need? How many people? What roles will they play? And this gives us a nice breakdown of crew requirements and salaries. So this is more than just a shipbuilder's book, and I'm going to get into that in a minute too. 
Now you're going to install your staterooms, uh, your emergency low berths, regular low berths. Are you going to be single occupancy, double, and common areas and living space? Very important for people, especially that are in jump space for a week at a shot. You should have a common area where they can come out of their quarters and relax a little bit with each other instead of always being in isolation at their station or in their quarters. You want to allocate cargo space. Cargo is huge in Traveler. That's uh, why people go from star to star, interstellar trade. And then you're going to finalize the design. Airlocks on most ships are come, this come standard. And then cargo hatches. And now we're done. We've designed our ship. So it's actually not that many pages on the actual design of the ship. But now we start getting into the meat and potatoes of what the designs are, are made of. So here we are, weapons and screens. Tells you how, you how many weapons you can put on the vessel. And if they fixed mount a turret, a barbette. A small bay, a medium bay, a large bay, or a spinal mount. And then system defense and sensors. And are there subordinate sub-smaller craft that have weaponry? Uh, critical hits on large ships. Turrets and fixed mounts. And then all the different types of weapons that you have. You have the particle beam, plasma gun, pulse laser, rail gun, sandcaster. And then in a barbette, you can put in a beam laser a fusion barbette, an ion cannon. Ion cannon, again, I, I'm an older traveler guy. I don't remember reading a bunch about ion cannons. Famous, of course, for Empire Strikes Back, where the rebels fire an ion cannon to disable some Imperial ships. Ion cannon basically acts as a pulse, uh, like uh, off a nuclear weapon. It's just a, a, an electronic pulse that will disable the ship for a time. It doesn't fry the stuff, but the stuff has to reboot. And here we go, the weapon trait ion, and there she is. She's all called out. Orbital bombardment. Uh, artillery, they call it. Orbital artillery. You want to bombard a planet? Artillery is the best way to do it. And then we get into uh, weapon bays. And these are the bigger, bigger, bigger uh, guns. Here we go. We're, we're getting into some serious damage here. Whoops. And then medium weapon bays, large weapon bays. And then spinal weapons. I love spinal weapons. You don't see spinal weapons much in your day-to-day -day traveler because, frankly, if you're on the business end of a spinal weapon, your ship goes away in a hurry anyway, and you'd have to be running a military campaign for someone to actually be aboard a ship that has a spinal weapon. So I've never had a spinal weapon be an integral part of my traveler campaign, but they certainly have been present in different forms. And... We get some different missiles. We get the ion missile, which will disable the, the vessel. The jump breaker missile, which puts up a uh, false gravity field right near a ship that's about to go into jump and aborts the jump. So it's a way to keep somebody from escaping you by jump, going in and jump. I thought that was a pretty neat missile. And then we've got a bunch of different missiles. Now we have torpedoes, point defense weapons, screens. Uh, we have shields. Oh, my goodness. On page 79, we'll get there in a bit, we actually have shields. Uh, a la Star Trek, the electromagnetic shields. Mason screens, nuclear dampers, the black globe generator, uh, all traveler staples. I did a video on the black globe generator a few months ago. And how they work, they absorb attacks, how they flicker to uh, dump energy. And then we go to spacecraft options. These are things you can add on to your ship. Maybe even after it's been built. So an armored bulkhead, an adjustable hull. So you can re reconfigure the look of your ship on sensors. You just change its shape a little bit. You change the drive. So it's kind of a chameleon vessel. Uh, pressure hull for higher pressure environments, like going deeper in a gas giant. Modular hull. Modular cutters were big, big, big in Traveler the New Era. Because everything was bootstrap and they were, you know, they had to get the most out of every ship design. They were designed largely as modular ships, so that you could swap out the crew cargo or the cargo area. You could swap that out for a research station on the same ship, and they were interchangeable between hulls and things. It's an interesting idea. It doesn't appear as much in other versions of Traveler. It's always been there, but it's huge in Traveler: The New Era. So here we go for drives. You could attach a high burn thruster for that quick getaway. A concealed maneuver drive. This talks about putting the thruster plates maybe inside or, or to the side of the ship. 
G-lock, gravity loss of consciousness when you're pulling those high G maneuvers. Uh, if you go beyond the G rating of your gravity field, you risk going unconscious. And then we solar sails, fuel, you can have a collapsible fuel tank, a drop tank, uh, cargo uh, fuel and cargo container, uh, fuel tank compartments, a fuel scoop, uh, and then a mountable tank, ram scoops, accommodations, uh, acceleration bench and seat, barracks, brig, uh, just really nice. The bridge, what you're putting in the bridge is a detachable bridge. Uh, a la Star Trek, where the saucer section separates. Sensor station. Uh, cargo. What you're doing with your cargo. How you're securing your cargo. Cargo net, cargo crane, loading and unloading. And then we have uh, jump net. And drones. Drones are huge in uh, Mongoose 2nd Edition. I'm okay with that. Drones are getting bigger and bigger in our real world. So Mongoose is following... Uh, with that, with having drones become a little more important in their universe. And then sensors. I love sensors. That's one of my favorite topics of Traveler. So we get a nice look at sensors here. Uh, breaching tube. You're, you're going to attack that enemy ship and you uh, want to go from ship to ship. You attach a breaching tube like an old boarding plank from an old uh, wet sail ship. A donkey clamp. Uh, a grappling arm, all kinds of fun things. Internal systems, additional airlocks, and armory. So a lot of, lot of stuff in here. So if you think this is just about spacecraft options, it is. There's a lot on here about it, but we're going to get to more in just a moment. So going past all the various options, now we go to space stations. You can actually create a space station using much the same stuff you're using to create your starship. I love space stations, especially in Traveler. You, you have to have space stations. Uh, it was something that Star Trek was always a little slow to recognize, but they finally have. And uh, we go further on these. That well, We talk a little bit about star ports. Your space station can be your high orbital port or your high port. And there can be a dirt side component called the down port. Customizing your ships. Uh, altering your tech level. Uh, your various maneuver drive advantages and disadvantages. Jump drive advantages and disadvantages. Refitting a ship. That's a subject that's often near and dear to travelers' hearts. Now we get to the ship's computer. The ship's computer is the brain of the uh, ship. And this gives us a ton of detail on various uh, computer packages we can have. Now we go to sensors again. I'm a huge sensor fan. So it gives us a lot of detail on ship sensors. Now we have exotic technology. We get to look at it. So if it's something that's not in the official Traveler universe, but you think would be cool in your universe, maybe it's a one-off on a ship. Maybe it's a ship that your, your players are opposing in, in the story, or maybe they get their hands on it and they've got some alternate technology. That's up to you. But you've got hop drive, hyper drive, skip drive, warp drive, time drive, all kinds of stuff you can do with Traveler. We've got some new weapons. Again, these would be stuff that would be maybe in the Traveler Companion that's brought out here. And new options for collectors, gravity well generator, white globe generators. I always love white globes, the more advanced counterpart to black globes. Psionic technology. That's pretty neat. Psionic shipboard technology. And now we get to the crew roles. This is where this book is valuable even if you're not a gearhead. If you don't care about the nuts and bolts of the ship, this gives you all the crew roles, what people do aboard the ship, what the purser does, the astrogator. It gives you by position what it does. Captain, the engineer, the gunner. And there's some stuff in here. I'm an old traveler fan. I'm an old science fiction fan. Uh, going back to Star Trek, uh, I remember seeing Star Trek in its original run in the late 60s. My mom was a fan of it. So I remember seeing particularly Spock's Brain episode. So I've, I've known Star Trek since I was very small. And uh, it's neat to have a lot of detail on who does what aboard the ship. Even though I'm a science fiction fan for 50 plus years, 
there's still stuff in these pages that kind of made me stop and think a little bit and different ways I could uh, do things and how I could shape stories and things like that. Maintenance, Marines and ships, troops, a medic, the officer, the pilot. Pilot's got a big section. Sensor operator, sense op. The steward, what does the steward do? Hand out little packets of peanuts? No, they do a lot more than that. And then creating deck plans for those who are artistically creative. I am not, unfortunately. Uh, I'm no artist. Uh, but here are how to make your deck plans. Some good examples. For various steps to make your deck plans. Fighters. We take a look at different types and sizes of fighters. Something that travelers never really put a ton of stress on, but is brought out a lot here in this book. And then fleet battles. This section is really good. I read it over for in prep for this video, but I'm really excited. I'm going back and I'm rereading this whole thing. I've always loved the idea of fleet battles. I never felt Traveler lent itself much to fleet battles. I'm going to try it, and if I can figure this out and I like it well enough, I'll try to make a uh, fleet battle bat rep sometime down the line for the channel so everybody can see what it would be like for a couple of fleets to go at each other. We get the fleet sheet, so you could put your fleet name and, and everything on it, and then the actual ship itself. It gives us the Tigris class dreadnought as our example. And then the squadron sheet, the fighter squadron sheet, and then your fleet evaluation, what, what it can do what it's shaped to do, and uh, all the rules. And then fleet combat rounds, how to actually do it. So kind of a war game for fleets. I'm pretty excited about really diving into this. As I said, I read it coming into this to make this video, but not nearly in the detail that I wanted. Uh, I'm going to go back and uh, spend a lot of time reading these. And fleet maneuvers. Nice little sensor plot. And then celestial terrain. Yeah, there is terrain in space. Boarding actions. Uh, how do you want to board the enemy once you've disabled him or he surrendered? You know, all the details you're going to need right here. Keep in mind, I'm only 128 pages into this book. It's 288 pages long. This is a big book. Spacecraft of the Third Imperium. This is what everybody thinks of when they hear High Guard. Oh, it's just going to be a book of ships. Well, a lot of the book is ships. I'm okay with that. I'm particularly okay with one of the changes that they've made. We don't have the isometric uh, floor plans anymore. The deck plans are laid out in a top-down view. I find that much easier to use as a game master if I need to show my players something. I, it's easier to show a top-down than the isometric view. So the different vessels, the military gig, the launch, the ship's boat, the slow boat, the pinnace, slow pinnace, modular cutter. Again, the modular ships used to be a big, big thing in Traveler. Cutter modules. Different modules that go with your modular cutter. Heavy fighter. Fighters get a lot of love in this book. A troop transport. And nice top-down view. Torpedo boat. A shuttle. Passenger shuttle. Express boat. Now, I'm not going to call out each and every one of these, but some of the more well-known ones, like the Scout Courier, the Suleiman class, the Seeker Mining Ship. So the rest of the book is pretty much just the various ships with the excellent deck plans. Fighting a little technical problem here. This thing keeps flashing up for some reason. Let's see if I can't catch it. Free Trader, ah, the Type A Free Trader Beowulf class. The Safari Ship. System Defense Boat. All these are called out here for your use. The Jump Shuttle. You can plug these into any of your games. There's no work for you to do with them. 
We've got the yacht. The close escort. The fleet courier. I'm going to adjust my shot up a little bit and take that out of there. Okay. The laboratory ship. Sorry I had to go up in a goofy shot like this. My computer's doing weird things. The patrol corvette. The subsidized merchant. Scout survey, the Donosev. The STB, the Dragon. All these are very familiar traveler ships, and they're brought out in the current iteration of the High Guard rules with nice top down deck plans. So I'm pretty excited about all of this. I'm going to go through this video, it's getting a little long, so I'm just going to kind of blow through some of these. The Mercenary Cruiser. Uh, Timeless vessel for traveler. Exboat tender. Destroyer escort. The chrysanthemum. I always love the destroyer escort. And we're going to keep going. There's a bunch more on here. Again, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. The colonial cruiser. The canoeer. Just took a look at the canoeer on my channel not too long ago. The Merchant Cruiser. Cargo Carrier. These are all just nicely rendered. Very useful. The Midu Agasham Destroyer. I just want to show what's in the book. I don't want to dwell on any of these. The Fleet Escort. Just because it's nice to know what's in a book. I think Mongoose did a magnificent job with this book. Uh, the writing is top flight. Uh, we've got a light cruiser here. The, the, what you get in the book is absolutely worth the money. Again, I can't compare the old second, uh, Mongoose second to this one because I don't have the original Mongoose second. I just have the 2022 update. I do know that this is laid out nice and clean. Uh, again, the top down deck plans are my, what I favor as opposed to the isometric. I just find these easier for players to understand. Strike Cruiser. The Battle Rider. The old theory that the ship that uh, is riding in a ship but doesn't have uh, any kind of jump capability, it's devoted more to weapons and shields, will defeat a ship that is jump capable of equal weight. Love Battle Riders, Frontier Cruiser, the Zanti High Lightning. Ah, an old favorite. The Atlantic Heavy Cruiser. Okay, we're getting close on the end here. The Strike Carrier, the Wind Class. The Fleet Carrier, the Antiyama. Some of these are new to me. I don't know if they're in the other High Guard or not. They're new to me. I'm pretty excited about them. Uh, the Galika Magula class freighter. That's a big ship. The Kovarak Dreadnought. And trying to minimize dead air. Uh, just pictures without words. The Plankwell cla uh, cla class Dreadnought, which is uh, for some reason in this picture marked as a Kokorak. So there's a little error there, but I love the plank well. The, there are not many errors in this book that I've caught so far. There might be some in the actual design process. I'll know that better when I actually do the design. So I can't speak to that. But as far as typos, just, you know, regular typos, no, I haven't uh, encountered a bunch. And then we come to the index. <clears throat> so there we have it. The brand new 2022 High Guard update. Uh, I recommend it highly. Uh, I'm excited to have this in my Traveler collection. And I'm excited to uh, design my first Traveler Starship in quite a long time. So I'll, I'll let you know how that one comes out. And if it's any good, I'll feature it on the channel. That's all I've got to say today on page 121. I know this is a long video. Thanks for sticking with me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, Patreon support would be wonderful. Tell your friends. 
and I'll see you next time on page 121.